Hey guys, what is going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and I'm super excited to show you guys the Ubuntu 1910 server image. And we're also gonna be installing a full desktop GUI on this guy, so let's get started. So before we begin, I do want to mention that I started a brand new channel called Pandemic Playground with my friend where it's based around co-op survival sandbox games and I've been having a lot of fun just playing games and not really having to edit. So if you guys can, please subscribe and support me in that channel so I could get it at least past the first thousand subscriber goal mark. I will be pumping a lot more content over there again because I don't really have to edit so that's going to be great. So everything we talk about in this video will be linked down in the description below so if you guys are interested in testing out this image. Now one of the reasons why I'm super interested in this operating system is because it's got a 64-bit version so it's got both 32-bit and 64-bit now remember a couple of weeks ago I did a video on running the 64-bit kernel on Debian on the Raspberry Pi even though it was 64-bit but we didn't have a 64-bit user land well in this version we do it's going to be a full complete user land and the kernel so we're going to be able to install 64-bit applications onto our raspberry pi 4 and that's that's where i'm really excited about so to begin we're going to be loading our image using etcher onto our sd card then booting it with, with raspberry pi 4. now if you got a raspberry pi 4 4 gigabyte version there is a little bug with it right now and they do know about it so it will be fixed but as of right now there's a issue with running four gigabytes in the usb and in order to resolve that is to actually modify the sysconfig file which is basically your config.txt on the raspberry pi version and you got to add total underscore mem equals 3072 so you got to lower the ram from four gigs to three gigs so the usb will work again there is a patch and everything for the kernel it's just a matter of when ubuntu will you know update their kernel upstream to have it available for our Raspberry Pi. So it's not something that it's gonna be there forever. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be fixed very soon. Now, moving forward, if you are planning to just use the server image as itself without any GUI, just the console version, you're basically set. It's It works as it should right out of the box. But I, I actually wanna convert this image over to using a full desktop to see how it handles. And since, again, we have 64-bit applications, running a 64-bit Firefox would be great. There are a couple of things I do wanna talk about in this video, which is W M and DEs. Now, if you guys are not familiar with what window manager is, WM, and desktop environments are, I'm just going to give you a little quick rundown. Now, both of these things, I would say, are two separate categories where they are needed to run a GUI environment, and they both rely on X Windows, which is Xorg. Oh, what we're going to be using is Xorg. Now, window manager, as suggested in the name, it basically handles the positioning of your windows and your programs and also gives you that taskbar, close, minimize, and all that other stuff. But it's still missing a lot of other features, like um, depending on what window manager you're going with, you might not have like that little dock on the bottom, you might not have panels, or you might not even have any desktop control. So you would have to install specific applications to get desktop icons or backgrounds or wallpapers and such while DE is an all-inclusive desktop environment when you install the DE it actually has all these packages into one docs panels settings everything so it makes it a little bit more convenient to run a DE versus a WM but then again you're bloated with a lot of software that you might not need or want so it goes hand in hand with how you want to build your system and how much resources you have and how minimal you want to go and DEs are usually pretty much bloated compared to if you're going to start everything from a WM and then add the programs in yourself. In this video, we're actually going to be doing the WM method. So I'm going to basically install everything that is needed to get it up to GUI environment without installing all the bloatware that you would find usually with GNOME or Plasma, KDE Plasma. So first thing we need to install is Xorg. Xorg, like I said, is your X window manager. Now installing Xorg is very easy, sudo app get Xorg. But in the Raspberry Pi, also remember to install xserver-video-fbdev. And then also add in dash dash no dash install recommends. Uh, if you don't do that no install recommends, it will actually install the full GNOME desktop on here. Now, since we have the X environment ready, we're still missing a lot of stuff to get this kind of up and going. We don't have a window manager. We don't have a, uh, any types of panels. We don't have a login manager. It's everything that you got to start putting in together. And one of the reasons why I like Linux so much and why Linux is so special, one of the reasons why I like Linux so much is the customizability. Is that a word? Customization? Yeah. And 
It's the ability to basically change anything you want on a Linux system down to what color you want the X button to be or minimize button and all that stuff. Where Windows, you're pretty much locked down to that theme and you could kind of change it with other software like Windows Blinds, but yeah. Anyway, it reminds me of all that. And especially when you're targeting a specific goal. What I mean by that is like, if you are on a limited system, like a Raspberry Pi, where you only have one gig or two gigs of RAM, and you really need to figure out what applications you should be installing to minimize the RAM usage and everything, that, uh, that stuff like that I really like, especially like boot orders and how to speed up boot. And that stuff is like fun to me. And it really reminds me of back in the day with like i386 or i486, where you have like 640 kilobytes of conventional memory. And if you wanna boot up a game or boot up Windows, you need 520, I think. But if you load the CD-ROM drivers or you load the mouse drivers or you load the sound drivers, you essentially will go down under that conventional memory spot where and you can't even boot into windows so you would have to figure out do i want the mouse or sound card and you kind of need to play around with that I'm, I'm getting a little bit off topic so stay on point i've actually did a little bit of r d and i tested a handful of window managers towards a fresh install of ubuntu and the point of that is to figure out which window manager slash de will give me sort of the most amount of ram and configurability config yeah Con customization. I'm making up words these days now. In my notes, the default genome, and that's probably the most bloated one, and it's the one that comes default with Ubuntu, eats up about 674 megs of RAM. But you do get a lot of features like searchability in the application menu or full desktop and a lot of other network manager and quirks and stuff like that. So it's all built in and it's very, very easy to use. So that's one thing about GNOME. The next guy I tested was LXQT, and this surprised me. It actually took up 600 and 18 megs of RAM after boot. And yes, you still get the search feature in the start menu, which is something that I really like, but 618 megs of RAM. So if you got one gigabyte Raspberry Pi, that's 50, 60% of your RAM that it's eating up and you can't basically do anything else. Running Firefox will eat up one gig of RAM easily. So I decided to go a little bit lower and try XFCE4, and that took up 465. Now that's a lot better, but it doesn't have that search feature in the start menu. And to be honest, I think that's where it eats up most of your RAM, but it also has everything compiled. You have um, your settings manager, your desktop is working, your file manager is there. So everything you need is already available. Going down the list, now we're just gonna deal with WMs, not desktop environments, like I said, with the top three, which is IceWM. IceWM, after it booted up, again, it surprised me a little, 456 megs of RAM. It's a very basic, but very customizable window manager, but it's very basic. It doesn't have all the nifty stuff like XFCE or LXQT or GNOME in those standards, but I, I was surprised it took up 456 megs of RAM. Next up I tried was Enlightenment. Now I don't have much experience with this. I just know it was, it's pretty out of the box. And I, I kind of consider it a desktop environment or a window manager. A lot of people say it's a window manager, but it actually comes included with uh, a desktop icons, file manager, and a bunch of other stuff to set it up. So I, I, I personally consider this as more of a desktop environment, but I was really surprised. It only took up 353 megs of RAM running the full desktop. And then last but not least, we have Openbox. And Openbox seems to be the, I would say, highly configurable, raw out of the box window manager and it only took 304 megs of RAM. There was also a bunch of other ones I didn't test like i3 or Awesome or you know Fluxbox, um, KDE. There was a, still a bunch I didn't test but there's so many out there and these are the handful that I tested that I normally know more, uh, I'm more familiar about. So moving on after you decide on a window manager, we would still need to install a login manager. And a lot of people could go for GDM, but that's pretty bloated, so I opted out for that. Instead, there are really two choices that I thought of, which is Slim or LightDM. LightDM is a little bit heavier. It's still lightweight, but it's easier to configure and it looks pretty, but I decided to go with Slim because it was, I'm the only one really using it and it takes up it's very, very lightweight. So yeah, I decided to go with Slim, S-L-I-M. Ultimately in the end, what I ended up choosing was to use Enlightenment, the uh, window manager and Slim login manager. Okay, so here we have Enlightenment and it looks really good. This is on a 1080 screen and you could see that it's already got compositioning and that's drop shadows and all that stuff. 
we get a little menu here and it feels like I could customize everything on here. Again, like I was saying earlier, I'm not too, too familiar with um, Enlightenment and I've known about this. It's got a really cool look. Can I change themes on this? Uh, composite themes. Oh yeah, I could change themes on this. I don't have any right now, so I could probably get to a browser to download some. But I did install Firefox. Let me see. Don't click on anything or it just closes the menu. Firefox. That booted up really fast. Uh, you know what? Uh, let me close this. It might not be accurate now because I did open Firefox, but let me close this out. Whoops. Open up a terminal. Where is it? Application system terminal. I know that button doesn't work. I don't know why yet. And if I do HTOP, uh, yeah, see that doesn't show, but it's 404 megs of RAM and that's after I cached Firefox. And is there a way to kind of run this and see how that works? It's going up, enlightenment, xorg, applications, internet, Firefox. Oh yeah, see look, once Firefox closed, it went down to 311. With Firefox open, it's like about 600. Uh, yeah, let's check this out. YouTube, Nova Spirit Tech. I know I typed it in earlier just to see if the browser would work because, yeah. Anyway, here I'm going to show you some little preview. I got a little task manager going on over here. 735 megabytes. Videos running very smooth. Let me see if I full screen this. It's still very smooth. I like it. It's working very well. Just to confirm, just to confirm, let me go to um, help. Oh no, no, not Firefox help. Go to help and go to about Firefox. Yep, you see this? 64 bit. Ah, I loving it. Running a YouTube video and Firefox, very smooth, and it's 735 megs of RAM. I don't have any swap, but this is the, you see how it says 2.7 gigs? It's the four gig model of the Raspberry Pi 4, but I only could use three gigs. Soon it'll be fixed, and I can't wait for that. Technically, I could patch it myself and compile the kernel and fix it right away, but I'm pretty sure Ubuntu will probably be on top of it. Maybe a week or two, they'll have the updated kernel. It does have its own file manager, like I was saying with Enlightenment. So if I go to home, you got a little, you see that? Their own little file browser, which is impressive. So I don't have to install like my own, like Thunder or something like that. Yeah. I really like this. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's more customization you could do on Enlightenment uh, uh, Window Manager or Enlightenment Desktop Environment, uh, Desktop. But yeah, it seems to be working pretty well. Not much lag. The browser works very smoothly. And 711 megs of RAM, everything loads up. Why are you guys not watching my vlogs? I mean, the video before is like 10,000 and then my vlogs, I, I barely get any. Give, give me some feedback. Why? <laughs> and is it, is it too long? Is it something you don't care about? I'm just ranting. Now I do like enlightenment, but it might not be a window manager that I might be sticking with uh, throughout this whole journey because I do want to use like open box and kind of customize the crap out of it and see how far I could take it with the 64 bit application, 64 bit Ubuntu on the Raspberry Pi 4. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you guys have any questions about this, hit it down in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.